It was a very violent film called Vigilante. Right. And uh, when I, d I played the uh, prosecuting district attorney of New York State, the part mm -hmm. was originally written for a man. And I said, look, you know, I'll be in the movie, but I don't want to go see it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was just too, I'm not, I really don't really like very, a lot of violence, uh -huh. but most people do. That's what brings them into the theater. Yeah. Don't you think the Americans are most, of the, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm just saying Americans. Americans really like violence, though. Yeah, well, Americans, a lot of really. countries do. Yeah. Italians uh, love yeah. it. They do. Oh, well, heaven, it's yeah. better to get off watching yeah. it rather than doing sure. it. Sure. But don't you think we should go to a theater and, and fantasize and just to enjoy a movie? I personally Why would like to do a, a, a costume movie with It'd great costumes and Wonderful. wigs and, yes. you know, uh, they, some of that will get done. I could see her as Madame Du Barry. Oh, I love <laughs> yeah. her. Yeah, she would be. I yes. love to wear yeah. costumes and yeah. all that stuff. What's the big change you've seen here in James in Hollywood? Really, what has really the big change in Hollywood? Well, I, I, I think it's the transition from the, uh, the studio system to the, the, system? the, the independence now, uh -huh. and uh, actors have to, uh, you know. Uh, friend of mine is Robert Redford. Right. You know, he makes a picture once every three or four years. He'd like to work oftener. Would he? Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 But, uh, you know. He chooses his own scripts. Yeah, he chooses he? his own scripts. Uh, and, it's very uh, difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do that, Carolyn? You choose your own scripts. Yes, I do. You yeah. do. You uh, must read a lot and see a lot of scripts. I do. Unfortunately, some of them, I read a script the other day. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just awful. Uh, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but you do have to sit down and read There was them. a great actress here. She lived down in Malibu, and she, mm -hmm. Joe Fury is her husband, who is Lee Grant. Mm -hmm. And they just packed their belongings moved and York, moved yeah. to New York. New York, yeah. And because, uh, you know, she, well, she's a great actress, and yeah. she's not going to stay here any longer. I don't blame her. You know? Well, I don't, I've been living in New York on and off for about the last 10 years, and quite honestly, they sort of have more respect for you if you come out of film here. Uh -huh. uh, they do, don't they? Yes, yeah. they do. They do, you're right. And yeah. the other thing about plays, which are, are very good to do, a very good growing experience. Also, it's uh -huh. very good to use your voice like that. You get lazy yeah, with these. Sharpen your tools. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, yes. But, uh, you know, you can sell out for three years, uh -huh. and nobody, nowhere near the amount of people will see you as on uh, one shot on a hotel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when you do plays, people have a tendency to think that you've left the business. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Carol Lindley, you have, you, know. you were in Return to Peyton Place. Yes, that, I guess I was. That was a great, a great... Uh -oh. Picture. Who was in that? I can't remember. It was an actor called Jeff Chandler who was in it. Who Jeff died Chandler. Right yeah. It was a yeah. sweet guy. And he died on. on Unnecessarily. He shouldn't have yeah. died. Should he, he just had a uh, little appendix. back. Appendix. No, was it was back. Was it a yeah, little was back? And they yeah. operate on him. They, uh, they left him in the uh, a waiting room and he was just. You're kidding. I thought. Bled to death. Why really? did he go to that hospital? I don't know. St. John's, wasn't it St. John's? No, it wasn't St. John's. Some obscure hospital. Really? La Cienega Boulevard. Unbelievable. Or Beverly Boulevard. Yeah, I guess his doctor went down there. Unbelievable. But another doctor came in and he'd been lying there for four hours and the doctor says, My God, this man is hemorrhaging. Uh-huh. That was it. That's how he died. The Gene Harlow's, you did the Gene Harlow. I did. Yes. And Carol Baker did one and you did one. Yeah. And did you do a lot of research on Harlow? Because you're. No, do you know, I didn't even know who she was when I did it. You didn't? She doesn't even remember Elvis Presley. She did. I do. You knew him very well, didn't you, James? Yeah. What kind of guy was Elvis Presley? One of the great gentlemen of all time. Oh, yeah. Very gentlemanly guy, you know. Uh -huh. Perfect manners. He was. Yeah. I, I, I would have loved to have met his mother because she instilled in this this guy absolutely perfect manners. Yeah, he loved his And mother. he was the king. He really yeah. was great. Yeah. I used to see his he guys, uh, you know, on the, the Memphis Mafia. Yeah, in yeah. makeup or, you know, yeah. in the commissary yeah. or whatever. He was never with them. I was no, always no. looking for Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. getting back to uh, Gene Harlow, yes. uh, that was a great, great film you did. Well, thank you, thank great. you. Uh, yeah. we, ours was in Electronavision, uh -huh. and uh, it wasn't as sophisticated uh, a process uh, physically as the film, the other film version, but I think ours was a little livelier. Uh, when I accepted that, I had no idea that they were doing another film yes. on uh -huh. the same subject. Uh -huh. Had I known that, I wouldn't have yes. done it. James, when I think of a movie star, I think of one thing, someone like this young lady here, Carol Baker, or Carol Ch Lindley. <laughs> 
all these wonderful people. Right? <laughs> which one I no, was? No, I know. I no, I did. I did not. Which one is which, it, Baker or no, Shanning? No, it's, it's Carolyn. <laughs> Ballard? Carolyn? Nah. Lombard. Lombard. Yeah. So, did you know that somebody did that to me once in the store? She said, oh, Miss Lombard, I've loved you for years. <laughs> and I said, no, no, I'm terribly sorry, but it, my name is Lindley. She said, oh, that's all right, Miss Lombard, you'll always be my favorite. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, you know, oh. time has already gone by. Do you know Pleasure. That? Believe me, Great. thank you for coming, Jim. Thank Terrific. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And thank you for coming. Okay. Yes, my Good. pleasure. And that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, darling. That's all right. <laughs> this is Skippy Lowe looking at Hollywood. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Skip E. Lowe Looks at Hollywood. Today's guests are the painter-sculptor, Mr. Kenneth Kendall, and the actor, Sam Jones. And now, here's your host, Hollywood's one-of-a-kind, Skip E. Lowe. Hello, everybody. Join me as we look at the memory of one of America's most loved and briefly known true Hollywood stars, James Dean. Who is James Dean? And here to answer that question is my first guest. An actor, he's a sculptor, a painter, and a very dear friend, James Dean, Kenneth Kendall, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Kenneth. How are you? How are you? Well, I'd say James Dean is about as close as we're ever going to get to seeing an enchanted prince. Oh, really? He never grew old. That's true, right. And he's, the main thing was that he influenced and changed everything. Uh, Out of three motion pictures, he yeah. only did three pictures. Yeah. Now, how come he left such an impact with the world? Only three pictures. It's just it was a terrific appeal there, and he seemed to hit everybody at all levels. Like to an old lady, he might be a grandson, or to, he's somebody's boyfriend, he's uh -huh. a son. He just, he seemed to fit in. There was something kind of that little boy lost quality that he could project, and just something terrifically dynamic. But it, it goes beyond that. Rebel? Was he uh, a little rebel? Is, would uh, you think? Oh, uh, to a degree. It was uh, uh -huh. apparently I've become rather a student of his life, you know, since meeting him. Uh -huh. When did you meet uh, James? Uh, well, it was uh, under certainly ideal circumstances. I had a telephone call mm -hmm. from someone, and they said that a friend of the actor, uh, Marlon Brando, mm -hmm. uh, James Dean, would like to meet me. Would mm -hmm. I like to meet him? Mm -hmm. Now, he had already made East of Eden. That was in the can and was to be released mm -hmm. about two weeks after you, you that. You were a painter, a, a sculptor yeah. then? And painter, he had, sculptor. Uh, Dean had seen a, a piece of sculpture of Marlon Brando that I did, of uh -huh. uh, Brando as Mark Anthony. Oh, did you do a Brando sculpture? Yeah, did you really? yeah. Uh -huh. And that was a, a successful thing. And uh, Dean saw that in New York in the collection of Daniel Blum, who uh -huh. uh, put out Theater World and Screen World. Uh -huh. And at that time, he told Blum he was going to look me up when he got to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And the sculpture, the Brando, was uh, displayed in my studio window on Melrose. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, the call was he wanted to meet me. So I said, you know, sure thing. So he showed up uh, that night with a girl with one leg. With one leg. <laughs> she had been in a motorcycle accident. She was kind of a walking accident, and then he kind of enjoyed her. And she was pretty noisy, and she was talking about herself. Now, the point that... Uh, Dean and I had in common, we both thought that Marlon Brando was the greatest thing that had ever happened. Dean was just, uh, That was know, his idol, wasn't it? Yeah, it was his idol. Yeah. It was someone that he wanted to know. Brando didn't want any part of him, mm -hmm. and Brando didn't want any part of me. Uh -huh. So we had that, we had a little discussion about that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And I also got to tell Dean about my impression of seeing Brando do the forum scene, you know, Friends, Romans, Country, right, right, from right. 12 feet away. Uh -huh. And this is the greatest acting I've ever seen. You were an actor. You are I was, an actor. I worked, uh, you extra in, I worked extra for about 23 years. As an pictures. extra? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a great spot to be in because you don't have any responsibility. You just have to be there and wear the costume, and you uh -huh. can rubberneck and look and mm -hmm. eavesdrop and see the whole thing. And you're not right. worried about right. your job, or if you're uh -huh. an actor, you've got to think yeah. about what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So anyway, how so do anyway, uh, say I, I wormed my way up on the uh, forum scene to where I was about 12 feet away from Brando, and he simply did things like he turned white, he mm -hmm. turned blood red. You know, mm -hmm. how do you do that? And recently, John Huston, in a book, uh, described Brando's performance in that, and he said it was like opening a furnace door, and that's <laughs> the best thing. Uh -huh. So uh, anyway, I was able to tell Jimmy about that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
then we went into the back part of the studio and he saw another head of Steve Reeves, what I was, which I was working on. Mm -hmm. And he said, boy, he said, that's great. And I was kind of surprised that he would you know, yes. know Steve because Steve's had, career hadn't started at that time. And he did. So then uh, he went through my whole, I had a file about that thick of Brando photographs uh -huh. and magazines and mm -hmm. stuff. So he went through the whole thing. But the first thing he did, he was wearing uh, uh, it's leather jacket, beautiful new leather jacket <coughs> with a mouton collar mm -hmm. uh, and some little emblems in the thing. So before he sat down on the coffee table to look at all the stuff, he got up and peeled out very slowly and del deliberately, peeled out of this jacket and held it out like that at uh -huh. arm's length and then uh -huh. opened his hand in a clump. And I caught him, it's an expression I've seen in the talk, looking over at me to see how this oddball uh -huh. business had, you know, yeah. affected me. Uh -huh. And then mainly he was kind of playing off of the girl, mm -hmm. uh, her reactions, and she was talking about her accident. Uh -huh. and he how always felt sorry for people who were disabled, didn't he, Jimmy? I mean... I'm not, I don't know that for no? sure. Uh -huh. He just thought uh, she was uh, an interesting case and a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he liked that. And she was talking about her, uh, she went into the thing about the accident and how she had the leg for months and finally she did, she said to the doctor, he was looking at it, she says, I don't want it. She said, cut it off. And Dean was going, just <laughs> like that, you know, just living uh -huh. the whole thing. And then later on he got the conversation on uh, accidental death uh -huh. of famous people. And we were sort of vying with one another. He said Zola with a stove and Shelley uh -huh. in a boating accident. I said, do you know about Ernest Chausson? I said his bicycle brakes went out and he hit a stone wall. I said, leaving the symphony in B flat. Uh -huh. So that was a new one for him. Uh -huh. So then um, this sort of chitty chat. And then he finally got up his courage or something, or whatever it was, and in his best little boy manner, he said, very hesitant, he said, like, would you be interested in, in, in sculpting me? Mm -hmm. And I honestly, at the time, I thought to myself, do you really think you're in this world class with people like Brando, you know, and, uh -huh. and Reeves, and, you know, right, right. their own thing? So I said, well, sure. Uh, so he said, how do you work? And I said, well, I said, from life, I said, photography, mm -hmm. I said, at movie magazines, anything, you know, uh -huh. they get a hold of. And I said, have they made a life mask of you yet in the makeup department? Is this one of you? Yeah, that's, the, uh, right that's the mask, yeah. That's the mask? So Great. this, I've colored yep. that up, but that's as close as you're going to get to the face. His eye, you notice his eye yeah. here? Yeah, well, there's I... something, uh, that's a very interesting thing. If you hold this to the mirror, uh -huh you'll see that this eye is lower. Lower, yes. It goes on a slight slant, and uh -huh. certainly he was aware uh -huh. of that. And so you catch him in like the painting I've done and all sorts of things. Dean is, go is like this. If he gets close to, he's afraid they're gonna see this flaw. Hand to the face. The hand on the face. Yes, so this, yes. this spawned a whole generation of actors who have their hands all over their faces, and uh -huh. they don't know why, you know, uh -huh. but that's, you know, that's, you know. Is that a Strasbourg, uh, you know, he I, studied with. Uh, I don't Strasbourg. think he studied much. He sat in on a few classes, but he was. Did he, uh, did he really? He, he didn't study much uh, with him? Not with, not really. No, I think they criticized him, and he didn't go for that. Oh, really? He had his own thing that he did, and he, uh, an actor uh, once described, he said that Jimmy had an infallible sense of dramatic truth, uh -huh. that just whatever he thought, the body sort of responded mm -hmm. to that kind of thing. Is this, is this, is this one of yeah, your this is the, uh, the he had asked shirt? me, I say, would I be interested? Well, him. he never got back. He never brought the, the photography. Uh -huh. And this was in January this is of 55. That's great. And he was dead in September. Uh -huh. So I actually started this thing the night he died. I thought, well, I've been waiting for him to come back. And in truth, he I... He died in what year? Uh, it's uh, uh, September 30th, 1955. God, it's like yeah. 28 years ago, isn't it? So I had God. kind of stayed... I avoided working on the film Giant because uh -huh. I didn't want to bump him into him on a set because I'd heard that he was a moody character and he mm -hmm. had fluffed Elizabeth Taylor, among other things, you know, walked right by her at one time. Why would he walk by her? Just preoccupied, thinking about it. So I thought, well... I thought they were friends on... They uh, were, but I mean, he could be uh, turned off of things just totally. Oh, I see. So anyway, I thought, gee, that... He was a loner, though. He was oh, yeah, a loner. Yeah. Yeah. And he had also, at the other, uh, at that tribute they had at the Academy, uh, Jim Baca said, he said, that kid had more guts. He said he would do anything. He said, more guts than anyone I've ever met. So um, anyway, uh, 
I see you brought I, up his jeans there. Are yeah, his, his yeah jeans? these are uh, somebody purloined. Is that these. James Dean's These are, jeans? yeah, oh the very thing. And there's the studio label in them. Yes. And it was a set of and what, what, three. What, what uh, film? Was it Rebel? That's Rebel. Rebel Without yeah. Cause. My God, James Dean. He wasn't uh, very, what was he, about 31? I'm not sure just what the... Like 31, uh, I think. Yeah. I don't know. 28, 31, something like that. Good. And I've, well, got the, anyway. uh, I've got a coat that he wore in East of Eden in the Ferris wheel scene uh -huh. and the bean field. That was the second that, movie, uh, Rebel, wasn't it? That's, right, yeah. That, the first yeah. movie was... Uh, East of Eden. East of and Eden. And I thought that was great. And I was, I was asked to the uh, screening of Rebel, and uh -huh. I... I thought, oh my God, he's not as good as I thought he was. That was my first impression. I was just kind of sinking down the seat, Rebel. I didn't. I thought it was a. Uh, it's a, Rebel. Did it's you see aging. It? Uh -huh. it got him all of the notoriety, certainly. Rebel. But it's aging less well than the other films. And Giant. Every time I see it, he gets better. Rebel was his main motion picture. That that's really the one that caught. That's yeah. right. I but they knew that, that he was. Uh, after the preview of East of Eden, they knew there was a star. Yeah, yeah. Because Kazan just, said that in his yeah. book. He said, well, he said, I guess Jimmy's a star. He said he just, you know, got the audience reaction yeah. to him right off, which I did when I, after having met him, about uh -huh. two weeks later, mm -hmm. I saw the picture and, how, you know, how yeah. he came. <laughs> and I thought, Jesus, I know this guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> he knows who I am. Uh -huh. He wants something from me. Tell me, so, if James, if, tell me, Kenneth, if James was alive, Jimmy was alive yeah. today, 1984, would he be as big as today? I mean, if he was uh, alive, now be honest. Uh, he he what, might 50? well have burned out. And uh, in a recent book, Edna Ferber's niece goes into the whole filming of Giant and so forth. And she said that death was the star of the yeah. movie. Uh -huh. And the fact that it's, uh, he had what one psychologist said was an appropriate death uh -huh. for a hero. In other words, the public demands that blood sacrifice. If a bullfighter isn't killed in the ring, he's not a famous bullfighter. That's, that's what I say about Hollywood. Hollywood just makes stars, and then they just tear where, them down. Where would Marilyn be? Yeah, same thing. Today? They always, I think that's what that Hollywood she loves. Had the, that's the greatest timing they in the world. Tragedy. They love yeah, tragedy. But, uh, Dean left us a little too soon, as some a friend of mine said at the time. He mm -hmm. says, "Well, he says there goes ten years of great movies, mm -hmm. and also I think if Dean had have lived, it would have been a spur." to Marlon Brando because, really? yeah, because uh, Brando would not have uh, been able uh -huh. to allow Dean to take over. So he, Brando is a great actor and mm -hmm. he would have exerted himself, mm -hmm. but as a being very well off, it's been good for Indians, mm -hmm. but not for the theater. Did Brando ever meet uh, James? Do yeah. you know? Oh, he did? He did yeah, he? finally they, uh, Dean, let's see, Brando was working on Desiree at uh -huh. the time. Now this right. was a year after, uh, Julius Caesar. Yeah, that was a great picture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Desiree, Brando couldn't even remember his lines. He didn't care. It was a mm -hmm. bad script. Mm -hmm. And he just would walk out and go, what? You know, like, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, had the director in tears, actually. Uh -huh. So uh, when he was working on that, they were filming at night the mm -hmm. fair uh, mm -hmm. uh, sequence in yes. East of Eden. Yes. Uh -huh. So Brando went out to visit Kazan, and they were, you know, properly introduced, yes, yes. And, it, and then Brando said, well, why don't you come down and visit my set? Uh -huh. So I, that was the first time I saw Dean uh -huh. in person, uh -huh. was he was down at Fox Western visiting Brando, and he uh -huh. you know, came down, hung around for an hour or so. They took some publicity shots, and yeah. Dean was dressed in his uh, East of Eden outfit, uh -huh. the, the sweater and the flannel right. and the little watch mm -hmm. fob. He just wore it around. Uh -huh. And a friend of mine says, "There's, you know, there he is. And I said, didn't I? Uh, Didn't I said face. sunburned kid. You know, uh -huh. I said nice uh -huh. looking, uh -huh. but just let it go at that. But yes. you didn't so realize then, he was going to be a <coughs> big star. I couldn't see anyone supplanting Brando. Brando was just. Uh, I'm looking over there at that picture right over there of James Dean. I see his hand on his face, and that's what you mean by yeah, his, yeah. He's sort of picking up, eye, and that's before eyes. before anything happened. I believe uh -huh. that may have been taken back in Indiana. That photograph. When did you do that painting? That's a beautiful painting. That's just painting. about uh, three years ago. I started in uh, working on him again. Uh -huh. I went out to a thing at UCLA. They had a marathon showing of his uh, three films and uh -huh. also a television thing for the BBC, which uh -huh. I had appeared in. And I, uh, it was a rainy day, and a thousand people came out in the rain. And they were all young people. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hey, I wasn't wrong mm -hmm. that this was, uh, when he died, I just felt there was. This was something different. Yes. This was, and uh, so many people wanted to bury him. 
didn't want, you know, thought, oh, that. Uh -huh. And I was once at a uh, very fancy Hollywood party, and our host very generously introduced me. He said, uh -huh. this is Kenneth Kendall, whose uh, sculpture of James Dean has been so prominent lately. Mm -hmm. And Hermione Gingle said at the mention of James Dean, she said, wasn't that strange? <laughs> uh, that was the end of uh -huh. the whole discussion. Uh -huh. It was strange. Uh -huh. But a lot of those people are now quite dead and forgotten. Uh -huh. And Dean is just as fresh as a daisy, and uh -huh. he's gathering new fans mm -hmm. all the time. Someone t told me about a 10-year-old a girl who's renting all of the James Dean movies, you know, it's mm -hmm. the greatest thing she ever saw. In Japan, mm -hmm. he's their idea of what an American is. And the Japanese kid. An American teenager. Yeah, American a, a James teenager. Dean, yeah, right. uh, a rather a Japanese uh, exchange student said uh -huh. to me, he said, oh, he said, all Japanese girls are in love with James Dean. Mm -hmm. That was just a, a, uh -huh. a stock thing with them. So <laughs> it's. Uh, I say he never grew old. Mm -hmm. I see. What did you bring us here? That's uh, a recent that? book that's gone to a second print. Roy Shatt, very good book. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a great was, picture of James Dean. That's I, probably the most famous that, one of yeah, all. It's called I, a series of torn sweater. I don't think I have that one. And uh, this is another. This is uh, Sanford Roth's wife has put this out. Wonderful pictures. This book, is a brand new book, and it's uh -huh. in Japanese, French, mm -hmm. and English. Mm -hmm. And Sanford Roth was assigned by Warner Brothers to oh, photograph James Dean oh, and it was just at, about at the end of Rebel that he mm -hmm. took on and he did a wonderful series But when he of first things. came to Hollywood, Kenneth, uh, he did come to Hollywood before he went to New York. I, I, oh, yeah. I met him in New York, you know. Yeah. I met him at a spaghetti place at Jerry's, well, he, Jerry's in, uh, on 6th Avenue years ago yeah. when he, before he came to Hollywood I met him. Right. And um, he came to Hollywood first. He I was in. He, he went to in UCLA. I didn't know. And that. he had an agent, and he mm -hmm. got a few bits, and they're kind of fun to see. They've been uh -huh. shown at some of the tribute things, just little, you know, two-line things uh -huh. Uh -huh. and stuff. And then he studied with James Whitmore, and Whitmore said, "Kid, it's in New York." That's where it's yeah. acting. Yeah. So he yeah. took he took off back there, and uh, I he think did a play in New York, didn't he? He did. Uh, uh, yeah, I did a uh, a painting from that. Uh, see the Jaguar. Is that and the, it, is that the it only lasted three nights on Broadway, uh -huh. but it was a uh, play of the month in uh, theater arts. Right. They printed the whole play. And uh, recently, Martin Landau said, he said, from that, he said that may have uh, only lasted three days on Broadway, he said, but from then on, he said, everyone in New York knew who James Dean was. Uh -huh. And his second play was The uh, Immoralist and he got an award for that in the Daniel Blum Award Best Newcomer and he was playing opposite Geraldine Page mm -hmm. and Louis Jourdan oh, who great was actors. Oh, well my. Louis Jourdan <laughs> was brand new to the stage <laughs> and apparently pretty nervous Geraldine and James Page. Dean was varying his performance and driving uh -huh. him crazy and I think to this day he can s still do without yeah. he doesn't quite get James Dean's charm mm -hmm. but there's a hotel in New York he stayed at called the Park Savoy Hotel on 58th Street and do you know who stayed there Marlon Brando did also oh and I think her Jane might have found out that Marlon's lived there. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, the kind because, of thing that, yeah, that, uh, that yeah. he would have done. A lot of actors stayed at this hotel. Yeah. It's right behind the Essex House on 58th Street. But can you imagine those two on the screen together? What that, huh. that would have really been something. <laughs> this is beautiful. I love this one right here of, yeah. of Jimmy. What is, uh, this, is your, that's, uh, uh, this is your works. Those are painted on porcelain. Or porcelain, beautiful. And uh, they're fired about a dozen times to get, uh, bring them up to color. And it's Gorgeous. absolutely permanent. They're I've been in a Canada. couple of, uh, okay. I've exhibited at the Royal Society of Miniature Painters uh -huh. in London, They're something lovely. I've been doing for about the last uh -huh. 12 years. Beautiful. So I've done uh, a lot of him. He's sort of uh, a permanent character. And someone said once, they said, well, how long do you think this is going to last? And uh -huh. I said, well, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, how long is it going to last? I don't think James anybody Dean. put a time limit on Lord Byron. And he's pretty much that. That's his name, isn't it? Well, it's his middle name. Middle was, name. His middle Byron. name was Byron. Yeah, his mother right. seemed to have had a premonition or something. He was from Indiana? Indiana, And we yeah. are in Indiana. Uh, uh, Marion. He was born in Marion, which is right next to Fairmont, and another small a, town. I see you brought a picture of yeah. his uh, this was the, the cemetery? Uh, cemetery? Yeah, well, this is just outside the cemetery. It's uh -huh. a brick circle and a plinth with uh -huh. uh, the name, which somebody has cut part of the E off of it. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, hydrostone head here, yes. sitting on top. This was originally a bronze. Uh -huh. uh, this was done in bronze, and it uh -huh. lasted a whole nine months. It was the first rip-off. Somebody got out Somebody there with a hacksaw and took off. it. Recently, they've taken his tombstone. Uh -huh. That was lo The tombstone was lost earlier uh -huh. this year. Then someone apparently stole it uh -huh. permanently. Uh -huh. You know, um, 
this this wonderful thing about James Dean, you know, there are a lot of actors out there, though. I must tell you, Kenneth, in Hollywood today especially, there are a lot of new actors out here, and uh, I want to introduce you to one I just uh, who is going to be a big star in Hollywood. Matter of fact, he was in a wonderful motion picture. Matter of fact, he's an outer space actor. You know what I mean by that? He played Flash Gordon. Right. And he was also in a wonderful picture, Ten. And matter of fact, he's Ten with all the girls in Hollywood. And a very handsome young man, and is a good actor. Let's give him a nice welcome. I'd like you to meet him, Sam Jones, OK? <coughs> Sam, hello. How are you, Sam? How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm a space sweaty. actor, that's what I called you. <laughs> you did <laughs> that okay. film. You did Flash Gordon in uh, London, did you? Yes, 1979. How? 1979. Mm -hmm. How in the How world did you, uh, you start your career? Where did it all start it and what happened? You know, I'd like to know. <sighs> Where to start? Young uh, man like you from well, James you, Dean now, you know, this yeah, is 1984. Was, I was really there. I mean, you really put me there uh, when, when you were telling that story. Um, I mean, I didn't, uh, James Dean was, was way before my time. True. But, uh, the way you were telling the story really put me there. Mm -hmm. And I, I really thought he was a great actor. It's a shame he had to leave us early. Uh -huh. But uh, I've sold my Porsche, left Hollywood, and I'm raising babies <laughs> now. <laughs> You're, raising, uh, you're married <laughs> now, huh? Um, yes, yes, I am. Uh, how, how did your career? Where did well, I, I came to L.A. in 75 to try to make it as a model. And um, I was intimidated by this town. And uh, mm -hmm. they told me I was too big anyway as far as stock size. So mm -hmm. I left. I was here for about two months. I came back in, in 78. And uh, at that time, I said, well, I'm not going to go back until I think I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm ready now. I mean, yes, you are. <laughs> it, yes. It, it amazes me uh, every year. But uh, I came back in 78. And uh, my God, I was here for about two or three months. And I, I uh, cast in the movie 10. Great. And then uh, seventy nine, we went to London to, to do Flash Gordon, and I was extremely lucky. Tell me about lucky. Bo Derek. You were in ten. Tell me, um, she? she's she, very private, isn't she? Yes, yeah. very much so. Uh -huh. She, um, we worked in Mexico and Hawaii for, for about a month. Uh -huh. I spent more time with John because he was. Uh, you talking about somebody who had some great Hollywood stories. Uh, he was Derek, talking about yeah. the stories in the late thirties, the forties, and the fifties. Hollywood in its heyday. Uh -huh. And I was just amazed by that. But uh, she did her job. I mean, she came on the set. She did her job. She left. And, uh, she was this professional. You know, just yeah, she, she, she was. And of course, back in 78, there we were in Hawaii. And Dudley Moore uh, uh -huh. and Bo Derek and people said, well, you know, she's attractive and he's very funny. But they had no idea that they, they would become major stars was, after that. Yeah. Was that your was first your, film? Uh, that was my first, first? Uh, film, yeah. How did it feel to be in a major motion picture like I was Kenny. kind of I was in awe of everybody I really was mm -hmm. I was just I was very low keyed and mm -hmm. just kind of laid back and just kind of watched everybody watching Blake Edwards do his thing uh -huh. um, uh, Julie Andrews of course there were some biggies and, uh -huh. and right but Blake Blake let me tell you something about Blake Edwards he uh, he knew that I had to be back in Los Angeles for, for an audition a mm -hmm. call back so what he, we're in Hawaii at some island mm -hmm. off in the middle of nowhere, and what he did, he brought in a helicopter to fly me to the, uh, to the airport uh -huh. to, to fly me back to L.A. F for this audition. Uh -huh. The audition was, was Flash Gordon. So he, he really treated me well. And, and the reason why I bring, bring it up is because I only had two lines in the whole movie, so I was not a major lead. So, right. But, but, he did but you were very me. outstanding in the film, believe well, me. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, uh, Flash Gordon from Blonde. You hunted mm -hmm. the film to become a blonde. Uh, why did they decide? I think you're great as a brunette. Well, no, the, uh, the character of Flash Gordon. Uh, had to be a blonde? Going back to the 20s and the 30s, it was platinum blonde. Was he? Uh -huh. So they, Dino De Laurentiis wanted to keep it as authentic as Oh, that was a possible. Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that's a big <laughs> We issue. all know it was a Dino yeah, De Laurentiis. He right. made very clear. He uh -huh. made that very clear. Was he, how, is but, he, was he hard to work for? Well, it, it was difficult at times. Yeah. Um, he wanted but, things right. But he, he gets things done. That's, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that's Dino for you. He, uh, he's a little difficult at times. Uh -huh. um, but he, uh, w what he did, he, at times he made people feel uncomfortable. But, uh, like, he, what? He, like, like what? Like what? Well, walking on the set, he intimidated quite a few people. But the important thing is, is that he could sell a snowball to, to an Eskimo. I mean, he, could, he, was, he was a salesman. Uh -huh. He could get anything off the ground. Uh-huh. Um, it's not that I agree with all his methods, but mm -hmm. uh, it's one way of getting it done for all you people out there who want to be, you know, up upcoming directors and, and producers is <laughs> one way of doing it. Sam, tell but me. Intimidation always works, I guess. I don't know. How long were you on that film? You were uh, six seven, months? Well, seven, well, seven months. Seven, and yeah, in six, London, was it filmed? In, yeah. In, all in, in London? London. Uh, on, on. Well, one week in Scotland. In Scotland. We went to the Isle of Skye. Was that your first time in Europe, was it? Um, second time. Second time? Oh, you've been to time. Europe before? I went there Where are you from, Sam? Well, I, uh, most of my growing up was in Florida, but I went to four years of high school 
in Sacramento. Oh, the capital. How nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, Buck Rooney. Uh, My announcer. Was, yeah, he yeah. grew 